Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about simple frequency distribution tables. So a simple frequency distribution table looks like the one you're seeing on screen right now. Basically, we use these tables in order for us to present data, in order for us to summarize a given data and present it in a meaningful and easy to understand way. And um, as you can see on screen, we have here a table on the left side. And for every row, we have the following numbers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And these are the scores that were observed in the given data set on the right. And in every column, we can see the following. So on the leftmost column, we can see the X, okay? And that is basically where we put the scores that we want to tally. On the second column, this is where we put the tally. Basically, we present here how many times a certain score in the table appeared in the data set. Okay. In the third column, we have here the F or the frequency. So basically, we're going to convert the tally into a numerical value. And we can also convert the F into percentage, which is widely used in research papers. Instead of simply reporting the frequency, Another meaningful way of presenting data is by converting the frequencies into percentages, okay? So we have here the following given on the right. So we can think of them as exam scores or quiz scores on a one to 10 quiz. And these are the scores of the students. And um, in creating a frequency distribution table, there are different rules that you can follow. In this case, I use four as my first, um, as the first, I put four in the first row because that is the smallest value in the given, which is why I started with four and then I ended with 10, which is the largest value in the data set, which explains why this table spans from four up until number 10. Well, now let's begin tallying the scores onto their respective rows, okay? Starting with um, the first given, okay? So we have here eight, get put that here, followed by nine, okay? Followed by eight, followed by seven, and then by 10. So on the second row, we have the following. We have nine, six, four, nine, and then eight. On the third row, we have the following, seven, eight, 10, nine, and another eight. On the last row, we have six, nine, seven, and two eights. So this is how a you, uh, this is how the tally column should look like, okay. It um let me proceed to the next slide for um a better presentation. So this is how it's supposed to look like once you have tallied the uh, the different um how once you have tallied how many times certain score appeared in the distribution, and the next thing that we do is to convert the tally into frequency, and we do that by simply converting the tally into a numerical value. So in this case, um, four appeared once in the given, and for number five, not a single student got a score of five, so that's zero. Six, there are two students, okay? Seven was observed twice, eight was observed seven times, nine was observed five times, 10 was observed two times. So this is why, um, and so these are the frequencies of the different scores in the distribution, okay? And just like what I said earlier, we can also convert the frequencies into percentage, which is another way of presenting data. And to do that, we need to divide the F by the N, or in some other versions, that is F divided by summation of F times 100. That's how you get the percentage, okay? So in this case, the N, the sample size or the number of observations is equivalent to the summation of F. So in other words, if you add all the numbers in the F column, one plus zero plus two plus three plus seven plus five plus 20, you will get the total number of scores in the given, which is 20, okay? 
To double check if your summation of f is correct, I suggest that you go back to your given and count, manually count if you have 20 scores in the given data set. Okay, I'm pretty sure we have 20 scores here, so this is correct. Okay, and once you have determined the summation of f or the sample size in this case, okay, we can now convert the frequencies into percentage by dividing the f by the total by the summation of f and then multiplying the quotient by 100 and then that's how you get the percentage well you can report this um as a whole number okay or if some would report this with one to two decimal places it's up to you how you're going to present this in my case i usually present the percentage um in whole numbers or in some cases with one to two decimal places depending on how much um, depending on what type of project I'm working on. Well, anyways, as you can see, so zero is equivalent to 0%, zero two is equivalent to 10%, three is equivalent to 15%, seven is equivalent to 35%, five is equivalent to 25%, and then finally two is equivalent to 10%. If you compute for the total of all the percentages, it should be equivalent to 100% or at least close to 100%. Okay, in order for you to double check if your conversion is correct. Okay, so based on this table, we can see that the biggest percentage is 35%, which tells us that um, 8 is the most commonly observed score in the data set, followed by 9, which is 25%. And the third uh, most commonly observed score is 7, with 15%. And this also means that nobody got a score of five. Okay. Well, another way to present data in a meaningful way is to compute for the mean, okay, of the compute for the mean of the given scores. And in in um when we are not using simple frequency distribution tables, we simply get the total of all scores and divided by the number of observations to get the mean. Well, um, the procedure is quite similar, but in simple frequency distribution tables, we have to follow this formula. So the mean or the X bar, okay, in this case, I'll be using capital M, just like in the textbook, okay, is computed by dividing the summation of Fx by N or the summation of M, okay? And to compute for the mean of a data set presented in a simple frequency distribution table, you should obtain the summation of fx. And we do that by creating another column, which is the fx column. And what we do here is to multiply the x and the f. Okay, so 4 times 1, that's 4. 0 times 5, that's 0. 2 times 6, that's 12. 3 times 7, 21. 7 times 8, that's 6. 5 times 9, 45. And then 2 times 10, 20. So that's the fx values for each column. Okay, and to get the summation of x, simply add all values in the fx column. And we're going to get a total of 158. So to obtain, to get the mean, to compute for the mean, let's, let's follow the formula. So that will be 158 divided by our n or our summation of f, that's 20, divided by 20 our mean is going to be 7.9. That is the mean of the scores in the given. And then finally, the last thing I would like to show you in this video is how to determine the mode of the distribution. And in simple frequency tables, the mode or the modal category, because we can also present um, categorical values variables using simple frequency tables. In that case, we call, we refer to them as the modal category. In this case, since we're dealing with scores, we simply say the mode, okay, is the category with the highest frequency, okay? So to look for the mode, just look for the, the row that has the highest frequency. In this case, the highest frequency is seven, and that is for the score of eight. Therefore, we conclude that the mode is it also had the highest percentage, which, which supports our conclusion. Okay, 
So that is it, everyone, for simple frequency distribution tables. Hope you learned a lot in this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.